FreeChains is a peer-to-peer -peer content dissemination system. Content here refers to all kinds of information and interactions on the internet. Email exchange, consuming news, social media interactions, and even making backup of documents, or using mobile apps, for example, to order food and taxi. This content needs to be disseminated between the participants somehow. So, for example, a new site will deliver content to many consumers, following a one-to-end -one pattern. If the site supports comments and feedback, then the dissemination will be in the opposite direction, end to one. An email exchange follows the one-to-one -one pattern and a public forum with many people communicating will follow an end-to-end -end dissemination pattern. It's also possible to have a single producer and consumer for the same information, such as for backup of files. Our idea with FreeChains is to offer these communication patterns using the same protocol, the same set of commands and APIs. FreeChains also wants to offer these services in a peer-to-peer -peer architecture, that is, without intermediates or a predetermined third central server, without a central authority that controls the access to content, and without the need of trust among participants. The internet today is controlled by very few companies, and they control our public information, collect our private data, even if we don't want. They also decide a large part of what we will consume of information. In many cases, the services need permanent connectivity, even for information that we already consumed once. Also, the protocols and data formats are closed, what prevents data portability and integration with third-party services. The Internet today is extremely centralized, very different of how it was first idealized and to some degree practiced between 15 to 20 years ago. Today, there is a large centralization of data, infrastructure, and power, and in the hands of very few companies. And if we want to decentralize content dissemination services, it's interesting to first understand better the current communication patterns. Here, we classify the patterns in three groups. The first refers to a public identity of a participant, usually a content broadcaster. They are news sites, streaming services, websites, and public profiles in social media. The second group comprises private communications in pairs, groups, or individual. The third group refers to public forums, such as Q&A sites, chats, and public commerce. The last group is much more complex since the peers do not know each other and in many situations we have to deal with malicious users. Taking the first group as an example of dissemination, a public identity wants to broadcast content to a target of interest. This content may be understood as a sequence of messages in time and the subscribers may also provide some feedback to the author. In a centralized system such as Facebook, the dissemination is always intermediated. The service controls your identity and content and forwards to other users, which also interact with intermediation of the service. In addition to our identity, we need other levels of trust on the centralized service, that it will exist and be available continually that the messages I send and receive will be in fact delivered, that the content I do not choose, for example, ads and recommendations will be appropriate, and still other issues with fake news and illegal content. And is it possible to decentralize these content dissemination patterns? There are several issues in networked systems that need to be addressed. For example, 
can pierce exchange messages. The issue with availability is not a problem in decentralized systems, exactly because they do not have a single point of failure. The basics of information security are very important when peers do not trust each other. But public key cryptography solved this issue a long time ago. The hardest are the last three items, especially for the end-to-end -end pattern in public forums where there is no mediator of trust among the peers. How to make sure that all peers receive all messages and in consistent order. How to make sure that participants can communicate with each other. And how to make sure that the most important messages are highlighted and at the same time that messages in excess, spam, fake news and illegal content do not take over. To answer these questions, we propose with FreeChains, a decentralized reputation system for messages and authors. The participants evaluate the messages with likes and dislikes, and the reputation system is applied automatically by the protocol, possibly blocking certain messages and highlighting others. Now let's look closer to the end-to-end -end communication in public forums. The communication varies with time and also with the presence of users posting new content. Here a user posts a question and two other users respond. Then a new question appears and then another question that is answered which receives a question on top and this goes on. In a centralized system such as Stack Overflow, these posts can be projected over time and ordered by an arrival time. It's easy to obtain a total order of messages in a centralized system. With total order, each message has exactly the same position in all peers. But in a decentralized system, Issues such as latency and connectivity can lead to different orders of delivery in each pair of the network. Hence, how to synchronize these peers over time? How to determine what each peer has received and not received? And how can we make sure that all delivery orders do not break any consistency rule? For example, that an answer always arrives after its corresponding question. Many other systems approach peer-to-peer -peer content dissemination. The Bitcoin is also an end-to-end -end system that solved the consensus problem with the concept of proof-of-work. Here, each node had a different order of delivery. We will not go through the protocol here, but the important is that one of these orders always has more work associated, and it becomes the network consensus. Bitcoin can assign a total order to events in a distributed setting, solving a central problem of consistent that in this context doesn't allow the users to spend the same money twice. Hence, Bitcoin solves one of the problems that we described before. However, the practice shows a huge concentration of power in the hand of a few nodes in the network which is a potential threat to the evolution of Bitcoin. In theory, these nodes can control the network content, for example, by negating or delaying some monetary transactions. Our observation is that the total order is a very strong guarantee that maybe we could relax in some dissemination context to alleviate fairness in the network. Another issue that does not apply to Bitcoin but which is important in, in our context, is that Bitcoin only transfers quantitative values and there are no subjective matters to be taken into account. Free chains applies to a different scenario. The D8T's distributed hash tables are another technique used in peer-to-peer -peer systems. It's the base of BitTorrent, IPFS, DAT and other modern systems. Each content is associated with a unique identifier, 
usually the hash of its own content. With this identifier, the DHC can locate the actual content in one of the peers of the network. DHCs are fast and scalable. They are also very efficient to disseminate large and popular content, for example, movies and software. However, since the identifier has to be known in advance, it's hard to make searches and also discover new content. Less popular files may also be hard to download. A big challenge for DATs is to keep enough incentives to keep the peers storing and disseminating their files. Going back to the end-to-end -end communication in public forums, in free chains, to obtain consensus, we only respect the causality relation among posts. For example, a question must always be delivered before its answers. In other words, free chains will always respect the arrows that appear in the graphic in all nodes in the network. However, posts without causality relation, like these two, can be delivered in different orders. Besides causality, the protocol also adopts a best effort strategy. That is, when a node posts a new content, it will point with the dashed lines here to content that it already saw, even if there is no semantic relation between them. Even so, there will be still cases in which posts are delivered in different order, which makes free chains to only guarantee a partial order of events. It's important to note that this best effort strategy doesn't offer much temporal guarantees for independent events. For example, let's consider this new post here in green that no other node has seen before. It only points to a very old post. Hence, it's not possible to determine when it really happened since we have all this time space possible. We don't know if the post comes from a node that was disconnected for a long period, or if it's a post that ignored the best effort strategy for some reason. We'll discuss these considerations in the future. In the second part of this video, we'll present free chains more concretely 